Hey guys, it's Cassie and today I'm doing a Q&A all about being a full-time YouTuber slash content creator or whatever. The one year anniversary of being a full-time YouTuber for me is on the 1st of January, so I'm now going into year two of doing this very strange and weird and wonderful job that nobody quite understands. So I am here to answer your questions. I asked you guys on my Instagram to drop me questions that you want me to answer. I'm gonna be going through them today. Guys, if you are new here, my name is Cassie and I'm a self-diagnosed luxury addict. I put out videos on Mondays, Wednesdays and Fridays, so if you like luxury fashion, then you're probably gonna love it here. So head down there, subscribe, turn on the bell, become a member of our luxury addicted family. When are we going to rehab? <laughs> Never. Settle in, grab a snack, let's have a look. Work-life balance in corporate versus YouTube. Do you work more or less now? I definitely work more, and I don't just think that that's a YouTube thing. I think that is if you're doing anything that's yours, if you run your own company or if you're self-employed or something like that. Like when I had a normal job, I would finish at five, done. I would not think about that job again until I was in the office the next day, you know? With YouTube, I think it's a combination of because I'm so obsessed with what I do and I love talking about what I talk about it's something that's always going to be happening and also when you're on when your job involves social media I will be scrolling through Instagram like not working just you know enjoying life doing a scrolly scroll and then I'll see something and I'll be like oh I want to mention that in another video blah 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 so it never quite switches off I'm trying to be better at doing that. Um, do I regret leaving my job? No. <laughs> Started this job 1st of January last year, right? And I think it was March when Nia was like, oh, so have you like thought about your old job at all since you'd left? And I was like, this is literally the first time I've thought about it. And it's not because I hated my job and all of that. It's, it's just because I think that this is what I was meant to be doing the whole time. Editing tips. I filmed and I'm so stuck on how to make an ed interesting edit. I don't know if I'm the person to come to. I don't really do anything crazy editing wise. I do jump cuts so that I don't have the uh in between everything or else it would drive you guys crazy and it drives me crazy in editing. I do a little bit of zoom in. That's it really. Um, but I just sort of learned that from watching other people's YouTube videos and then Googling like, oh, how do you zoom in on Final Cut Pro? I use Final Cut Pro. How long does it take you to film and edit a video in total? It depends on the video. I would say the average video probably takes me between 20 minutes and half an hour to film. That's if it doesn't involve try-ons. If it involves try-ons, add another 30 minutes to an hour. The editing, the shortest ones to edit for me are probably hauls or like unboxings. But anything else that involves me, if I have a picture on the screen, so like if I have to find things on Instagram or screen grab the website, or if there are prices that are in two currencies, all of that adds a lot of time. Unboxing video might take me an hour, an hour and a half to edit. I would probably say my longest ones to edit are maybe like five hours. YouTuber drama. I don't have any, thank God, because, well, none that I'm aware of, I don't know, somebody might be beefing me over there and I've, like, got no idea about it. I am a very unconfrontational person. I don't like s starting things with people. I, I don't do that in real life. I wouldn't do that on the internet either. Do I have a manager or am I solo dolo? I like that. I do not have a manager. One of my goals this year is to get a manager but I am very, very picky. So actually, funnily enough, this week I've had two meetings with two agencies. All of the people that were on the call and everything were very, very nice. It's just that I need, I'm very specific. I don't want to be taking brand deals that don't make sense for me, okay? Like, and this is the thing, no shade to other YouTubers that take these brand deals and do similar content or whatever, but I'm not going to hop on here and be like, oh, and before we start the video, I use HelloFresh. First of all, Ni uses HelloFresh. I tried it one week and I did not like it, okay? But that just doesn't make sense for me, all right? And I'm very, very picky. I need somebody that appreciates that. I also need somebody that's going to back me and believe in me 100%. And I haven't found that yet. And I don't know if I will find that this year, but it's kind of my goal to find somebody that just like gets this, knows the path that I want to go on. And it's just like, okay, we're gonna get you there. So no, I do not have a manager. <laughs> have you been noticed on the street as a famous YouTuber? 
I am not famous, okay? People have come up to me and that is one of the joys of my life. That, if you see me, actually, do you want to know what? Somebody commented on a TikTok this week and was like, I think I saw you in Louis Vuitton in Selfridges, but I didn't know if you were okay with people coming up to you. I don't know who you think I'm at. I am. I'm not Madonna. Come up to me, say hello. Like, I will, I will have a chat with you, okay? I'm not somebody that's like thinks they're something that they're not okay i am very normal what's the hardest part about working with sponsorship partners do you want to know what i have been really lucky in that the people that i have long-term partnerships with are so good to work with i guess the hardest bit is actually how you guys are going to react to those partnerships and do you want to know what so far you guys have been amazing and you guys have gotten it and you guys love and use brands I work with and all of that. So very, very grateful that so far so good. Does YouTube full time uh, ever get you feeling lonely? I am. I've said this before. So I am a bit of a hermit. I'm an only child. I'm very used to making my own entertainment, which is, I think, why I have come to do this job. <laughs> It can get quite lonely, but a way that I kind of try to combat that is I just try to see my friends more. So I'll be like, right, let's get a lunch in the diary so that I definitely go and have that interaction and get a little bit outside of myself. Are you thinking of diversifying your channel to cover other topics other than fashion for new content? Kind of yes. I want to let you know that this will always be luxury fashion first and sodding foremost but i also kind of want to do a bit more vlogs a bit more personal kind of stuff maybe stuff a little bit more about youtube and everything just to change things up but also there is something a big life change that i'm going to be going through halfway through this year just to let everybody know i'm not pregnant i'm not getting married not getting a house the big three, it's, it's none of those, okay? <laughs> but I want to like take you along this thing that's going to be happening and stuff like that. So yes, and hopefully you guys are interested in it enough to, you know, wanna, wanna come along and throw me a view. <laughs> okay, what's your advice for aspiring content creators to get started and grow their audience? I know that this advice, it sounds very cliche, but stick with me here whatever it is that you talk about number one you have to make it very very you and bringing your personality into whatever topic it is is what sets you apart and i know that this is easier said than done because a lot of people are very sort of you know nervous about starting youtube and whatever and it might take time for you to grow into being yourself on camera okay don't water yourself down be very you the other thing is that you if there's something in the topic that you're talking about that you think has been missing or that you would like to see you be that person i hope that is in some way helpful <laughs> would i ever go into other media formats i think i'd love a cassie podcast what the hell would you want me to talk about i'm very much open to looking into lots of things and again maybe this is also where management would come in handy because i'm like yes i am open to it but i think that i would sort of need a bit of help setting it up or something are you getting more brand interest now yes but not necessarily in the brands that i'm interested in <laughs> this week i got an email from alibaba really do you ever get stuck on metrics yes <laughs> the youtube analytics page is savage when you put out a video it ranks how well it's doing within that amount of time that it's been out with all the previous nine videos that you've put out you want to be one out of ten you want it to be performing be performing the best out of the last nine other nine in that time frame so when it's ten youtube is like this video is performing ten out of ten your audience isn't interested in the topic i saw, i saw the numbers thank you like i don't need you to spell it out for me thank you so much last year i think i really struggled with getting very very much into the weeds about it and i had to do a little bit of trying to practice being detached from it and also coming to terms with the fact that i've kind of done my bit what i can do is try to come up with a video idea that i think is good i think provides value i think that people are going to enjoy create that thing edit it upload it and then i'm done there is nothing else that i can do 
As a YouTuber, you are very much a slave to the algorithm. How do you budget even though your income must fluctuate month to month? Love your channel, thank you very much. It does fluctuate month to month. Like I, I basically tried to predict how much I'd be making every month and whatever. I now work on a minimum. I'm like, I know at the very least I'm going to make X amount. And then that's how I sort of figure out my budget. How many brand collaborations are you turning down in order to stay tr true to your brand? Uh, at the moment, 99.9%. .9 I have three long-term sponsorships, okay? And aside from that, up until this point, I've pretty much turned down all other offers because they don't make sense, all right? I would feel weird doing it. I would know you guys would be on the other side like, um, Cassie, Cassie would never wear that. Cassie would never use that, you know? The majority, all of them uh, actually at the moment are being turned down. This is a good one. How do people react when you tell them that you do it full time? I think it's amazing. Thank you. Most people are very concerned of how I pay my rent. People are like, oh, what do you do? Oh, I'm a YouTuber. How do you make money? At this point, I have explained how I make my money to so many people that I should have a PowerPoint on my phone that I'm just like, okay, yeah, so this is what you do and blah, blah, blah. But yes, the majority of people think that I am just sort of pissing away my life and credentials and they're just like, good for, good for you. What's your inspiration? I want to start my own channel, but still finding the right content. Okay, so when finding your niche, number one, what topic in the world do you know more about than the average person? And B, in your friend group, what do your friends always go to you for? So ask yourself those questions and then think, okay, when you come up with a topic, you're like, all right, try and write down 10 video ideas. And if you can write down 10 video ideas and it comes pretty easily, try that, see how it goes. You don't have to commit. This is the thing. A lot of YouTubers trial and error and seeing what works and if you like it and all of that. And if you're talking about horses for two months and you're like, to be honest with you, I don't know how long I can talk about horses. That's not the topic for you. Try something else. Is it hard trying to think of new video ideas or do they come to you naturally? Half and half. Sometimes I get stuck in a rut and I'm like, I cannot think of anything. As I said, I'm also a planner. So I now have video ideas planned pretty much until March. Some things I move around when things come up or whatever, like mm, this, is, th this has just been announced, I wanna talk about it and all of that. As things come up or as I think of ideas, I'll write them down and whatever. But yes, sometimes I do get stuck in a rut. What do I do when that happens? I will look at loads of fashion sites and I don't know, try and get inspiration from that. Maybe it's an article that was written. I'm like, okay, I kind of like what they've done there. How can I twist this and do this in my own way? Or do you wanna know what? Sometimes I look at old videos I've done and been like, okay, do I have a new take on this now? Is this something that I can talk about this topic again because time is changing, there's new items? That kind of thing. Uh, tell us something that you learned the hard way as a full-time YouTuber, that this is a mentally exhausting job. Where it becomes tough is the mental aspect because not only have you got those kind of analytics side and you're like, oh my gosh, okay, this is my job now and I can't even do that right. Plus negative comments, then it's just like, oh my gosh, I'm an absolute failure. I'm the worst person in the world. Everybody hates me and whatever. So that is definitely the hardest bit and I'm still working on that with negative comments. It's horrendous, but it's almost a given. It, I mean, it is a given. It's a given as part of this job. How long do you think you'll keep doing this? Can you picture yourself doing something else in the future? I don't know. It's taken me a lot. Like I said, I'm very much a planner. So I'm very much somebody who, like, I need to have a plan. I need to know where I'm going in life. I need to, I'm going to do this for two years. And then I'll do blah, 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 blah. So it's taken me a lot to sort of let myself go and resign to the fact that, like, I don't know. I don't know how long I'm going to do this for. I might be 88 and be Cassie $2 Signs Octogenarian Edition on YouTube, still churning out the videos, you know? Or I might do this for some time and then decide to do something else. You know, I have no idea and I'm trying not to put pressure on myself to do that. Otherwise I will not be able to get through one day. So the answer is I don't know. Are sponsorships a more reliable stream of income compared to AdSense? They can be if you work with brands on a long-term basis, you can end up putting together like six month or year long deals. And that way you can at least plan that's like, okay, this, 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 and this month, I know I'm going to get paid this. 
So it's more reliable if you do it on a long-term basis. At what point should one make the transition to full-time? My thing was always, as soon as I make the same amount of money from YouTube as I make from my normal job, I quit. I also wanted to save before it got to this point because I know that YouTube income fluctuates. I had a bit of a unique situation in that the old company I used to work for was planning to get rid of X number of jobs and they opened up voluntary redundancy. When you get voluntary redundancy, you also get a payout. So that also was the like, okay, well, great. I have this money to fall back on if I can't make my rent, you know? I definitely had a situation which I knew it was like, if I don't take this now, then I'm never gonna do this full time. So I think once you've saved enough to live on for like six months, in case you make not a single penny from YouTube, and you're comfortable living on that and you're making an all right it may be a pay cut but you're making an all right like you can live off this amount on on youtube maybe not now lavishly but you know you can cover the basics then i think it's time but that's a very sort of like personal choice how did you manage to stay consistent when you had a nine to five I basically had my schedule and I would batch film so obviously worked monday to friday nine to five i would film on saturdays two or three videos depending on whatever schedule it was at the time. And then I would edit and upload throughout the week. And look, bearing in mind, I'm not somebody that has the biggest social life in the world. So that was easy for me to stick to. Okay, do you fear of running out of content ideas? Yes, I do. And thank you for triggering that again. <laughs> uh, yeah, I do, but it hasn't happened yet. So let's keep hoping. How long does it take to actually start making money? It really depends. And I hate this answer as well. Depending on what your niche or your topic is on YouTube, you get paid different amounts, okay? Certain topics, you get sort of paid more from ad revenue than other topics. I believe the highest earning topic is like finance and real estate, I think. But in order to have AdSense pay you, you have to have at least, I think, 4,000 watch hours and I think a thousand subscribers. Then you can apply to the program and then you can start making money. My very first YouTube paycheck was $40. Again, it completely depends on your niche and, and what you talk about. But there are people with very small followings that make way more money than I did at that stage, purely because of what they talk about and the brand deals and the brands that are then open to them. What camera do you use? I use a Canon ATD, EOS ATD with a Rode mic. I'll have these things linked and a Sigma lens. Are you having fun? Yes, I am. I'm having a lot of fun doing this very strange job. <laughs> Revenue streams for content creators. Okay, this is how people make money. Three main ways for YouTube. AdSense. Google AdSense, it pays you for how many um, for the ads that show on your videos, okay? Number two, affiliate links. I'm wearing this top. I may have it linked in the, des in the description box. You go on that link and you buy this top, I will then get a small commission off the back of that. People can make a hell of a lot of money on affiliate links, especially if you do like Amazon fast fashion. Those girls are making bank, let me tell you. And then you've got brand deals, okay? Brands come directly to you. Hello, we'd like to sponsor you for a video. You say that's gonna be this much. They may be happy with that. You may have to negotiate, blah, blah, blah. Done. So those are the main three ways. Bulk of my income is AdSense. What is my degree? Economics. And I went to the University of Birmingham here in the UK. Okay, do you ever feel embarrassed that your friends and family watch you? No, not really, because this is, um, this is how I am. So it's not like I'm a different person that I, than I am when I'm around them or whatever. So, so no, I've, I've never really been embarrassed about that. How do you get over the fear of uploading that first video? Look, you're gonna have to do it at some point. That's the hardest bit. Once you get over that, then everything else is easier, okay? And it's a complete learning thing. But what are you actually worried about? If you're worried that it gets zero views, well, guess what? Nobody saw it anyway. There's nothing to be embarrassed about. Um, number two, if you're worried about friends and family seeing it or whatever, well, if you haven't told them, then they're not gonna see it. So there's that. Uh, if you're worried about strangers seeing it, surely that's the point all along is to have strangers see it. You give them a bit of value or whatever. Brilliant. All in all, Nothing bad can come of this, you know? So you've got to just do it. Nike, just do it. Okay, has being a full-time YouTuber caused you to buy more things or things you wouldn't have before? Yes and no to this question. Yes, I've bought more, 
no it's not been stuff that I wouldn't have already bought had I had the opportunity does that make sense as in I only ever buy things that I want <laughs> you know and also I saw another question which was like how much of your stuff do you return none of it I'm a hoarder and that is why <laughs> Um, I'm sure other people are more successful business-wise than I am <laughs> but I do tend to buy more for sort of two reasons number one some of the brands I work with I get paid I also get credit so I get credit to spend on stuff the other thing is I now have sort of more opportunities to wear stuff than I did when I had a typical nine to five job like even though i'm not the most social person i do see friends during the week or, or all this business more than i did when i was doing nine to five any tips for a new con content creator please okay I, I, I've, I've already given tips on like a niche and all of that very much stay true to yourself create content that you want to see i i know that i sound like very generic you have to be consistent you have to create a schedule and stick to it that way it becomes a part of your life. It doesn't become like, oh my gosh, I have to do this thing or, you know, and, and then you miss an upload date and whatever. Because you guys know, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 1 p.m. UK time, there's gonna be a sodding video, except when, you know, I take a little bit of time off. If you do this, you have to 100% commit. You have to, you have to go, go big or go home. You can't be doing this half-assed. And, and this thing, you don't have to be putting out three videos a week. It can be one video a week. It can be one video every other week. Whatever it is that makes sense for you, do it and stick to it and be consistent with it for a year. Once you just get into the groove of it and you do that, then you can see, okay, this is working for me, this is not working for me, I want to up the content, I don't enjoy doing this as much as I thought I would, whatever. Stick to it for a year, I know that sounds like a long time. But that's the only way that you're going to realise, is this something that makes sense for you? It's not, you're not going to see the money or, or, or the views or whatever at the beginning you're probably not going to see it in the first year either <laughs> so i think it's important that you give yourself that period to see okay whether or not this is it how do you stay productive and get all the work done i have to i put out videos on mondays wednesday fridays 1 p.m uk time ring a ding ding and that is my commitment so however i decide to schedule my day or whatever my videos are going up on that time and i think by creating that schedule for the both of us it means that i cannot dilly dally as much as i would like which is a good thing or else i will take the piss okay <laughs> what job did you do before i had youtube uh for those of you that missed it i used to work in shipping specifically within procurement in shipping for an international energy company also loads of people want to know about money am i making more money than i did at my old job blah 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 yes i probably doubled what I used to earn last year and I was not expecting to okay interesting do you have to have a large Instagram following before starting a channel no I I don't know how many followers I had to start it was nothing as in like it wasn't anything that would help me with my channel if that makes sense followers that I have now is because of my YouTube channel it's not the other way around I want to start a luxury channel but I don't have the funds to buy all the new trends any advice N n neither do I. <laughs> you don't have to have all the stuff that you talk about. There are lots of stuff on here that I talk about that I don't have. That's when I put my Instagram photos that I find, screen grabs and all of that business because I still have an opinion or I might still think that something is great. You don't have to have all of the things, especially if you're looking to do a luxury channel, in order to talk about it. Have you gotten any inquiries from big brands already, such as Gucci LV? I sodding wish. I really do. No they don't know i exist yet do i regret not jumping into full-time youtubing sooner no i think it happened at the right time for me i'm glad everything happened when it happened i'm glad i got, had a normal job before this because there's a lot of things from that job that helped me with this job also means that i can manage my finances better because if i was doing this like straight out of uni like <laughs> I would have rinsed it all i really would have how much of your spending on luxury is for creative content and how much is it for yourself all of it's for myself. Creating content is more of a sort of offshoot of that, as in like, I'm gonna buy it anyway. The fact that I can do a video with a review on it or whatever is great, you know? So it kind of works in the opposite direction. Do you feel like you're more stressed now or more relaxed? Throughout all of last year, I was way more stressed. 
and to be honest with you i think the best thing that happened to me was taking that week off in december um so that really helped me and i think like i've come back a lot more like relaxed rejuvenated like all of that so i do really want to build in more holidays for myself this year a week here and there kind of thing because i definitely need to just do the switch off of like i am not going to create content at all this week and i'm not going to think about creating content at all this week and i'm not even going to look at my youtube analytics because i definitely need that to like center myself and then come back a big and badder bitch than before you know this one made me laugh do we all have the same 24 hours in the day this is a reference to molly may saying what she did on some podcast or something <laughs> here's the thing we may we may factually have the same 24 hours in a day but we do not all have the same circumstances that mean that we are able to do the same as somebody else in that 24 hours as in like i know what i did with balancing a nine to five and all of that would not have been easy if i had a child there we go uh did it affect your relationship with knee positively or otherwise no knee has his own company knee made a similar jump going from a very corporate atmosphere to do his own thing so when it came for me sort of thinking about the same he was like of course like he was the one that 100 percent backed it and was like you're gonna be fine you're gonna kill it this is meant to be all of that so it hasn't changed our relationship in any way we've always kind of been like this what shimmering eyeshadow do you use they're always sodding fabulous thank you they're all pat mcgrath um this is a new one this is from the utopian palette i love it but honestly if, if you want if you want to shift pat are the views the money maker or the subscribers it's the views you get paid on the number of people that get your ads basically on your video so it's on views um do you get fed up having to constantly film slash take pictures no i get excited to talk to you guys which is also another reason that i'm like okay this is what i'm meant to be doing this is very nice best youtuber um thank you have you have you gotten better i can't accept a compliment have you gotten better at horrible comments and do you compare yourself i've gotten somewhat better it depends what day i'm having if i'm if i'm like it depends how i wake up that day sometimes i'm just like that's a horrible thing to say about somebody move on with my life and other days i will have that in the back of my mind and i'm really like that person really said that about me or whatever but i think i'm getting better at it do i compare myself we all do yes 100 percent. i used to compare my growth i don't now because i'm like look i'm a different person i'm in my own lane everything happens for a reason my growth is happening in the way it's happening for a reason as long as it's always going up there's nothing to be sodden worried about like i wanted to reach hundred thousand by the end of last year it wasn't gonna happen that's fine is it gonna happen this year i sure sodden hope so <laughs> i have nothing riding on that hundred thousand all it means that is yeah i'm gonna get there but it's just gonna take more time and why does that amount of time matter so i've had to do a lot of sort of mental soul searching to make peace with certain aspects of this job <laughs> how do you deal with people judging you with this career move did they judge you yes um because i think a lot of a people don't know how you make money or how much money can be made and people also tend to think that this job is stupid or for like people that are very like vapid and don't have two brain cells to rub together so it's mainly that but to be honest like i'm not particularly bothered like i'm having a wonderful time and it's usually nobody particularly close to me so i'm not bothered about them anyway there you go i hope that was in some way helpful thank you for all of the questions that were submitted i know i didn't get through all of them but i hope in general i answered the main sort of topics guys i'm going to leave a link to another video here in case you haven't already seen it have an amazing morning afternoon or evening wherever you are and in the words of my father if you've enjoyed it tell your friends if you haven't keep your mouth shut i'll see you in my next video Mwah. bye guys